Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. My name is Jess, I upload videos twice a week, uh, mostly book content but also a little bit of travel and family thrown in for good measure and today I'm going to be sharing with you my autumn TBR. So every season I like to pull out 10 or 12 books that I think that I might quite fancy reading over the coming three months um, and sometimes I succeed and sometimes I don't uh, and autumn for me is a season of being cosy, all those warm vibrant colours, the weather changing, um, it's historical fiction, it's fantasy, it's being transported to another world with a few thrillers and spine tingling books thrown in for good measure. So I've pulled my books out, without further ado let's jump in and start talking about them. So the first book I am going to mention is one that um, I talked about in a recent haul video which I will link up here. Uh, basically I have agreed to read it because my husband James is desperate for me to read it. It's the first one in a high fantasy series, um, he has listened to them on audiobook and has not stopped going on about them and I said right right I will give the first one a go and that is Malice by John Gwynne. So, other than my husband's recommendation, I don't know too much about what this is other than that it is epic adult high fantasy. Um, we're following the story of a young boy called Corbin who wants to become a warrior. So he has watched enviously, it says on the back, as boys become warriors uh, and he yearns to join them, determined that he will make his family proud. We're set in a place called the Banished Lands which has an extremely violent past with armies of men clashing with magical creatures such as giants. Uh, they have had some peace but now the giants are beginning to stir once again um, and that's pretty much all I know about it. Other than, as I said, that it's extremely highly rated by James um, and he is desperate for me to read it. So even though it's an absolutely huge book. I'm adding it to the list. I'm going to give it a go. We'll see what I think. The next book I'm going to talk about is one which was on my summer TBR and I didn't quite get to it but um, I still very much want to read it soon and that is SSGB by Len Dayton. So this is historical fiction. It's set in the 1940s after the Second World War but it's an alternative history because Germany have won and so Britain is now under Nazi rule and we are following the story of a Scotland Yard detective who has a seemingly routine murder investigation land on his desk but things are not what they seem and he's thrown into some kind of complex espionage scenario um, and I just think that this sounds very fascinating. I think it has the potential to be quite dark um, but very very interesting and one that I'm just very much looking forward to picking up. Then I am adding on Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This is a crime thriller. I read A Good Daughter or The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter last year and thought that it was great um, so I thought that I would add this one on. So this is the story of Claire who lost her sister Julia 20 years ago. Her sister went missing and then in the present day another girl goes missing and Claire is convinced that somehow the two cases are linked and so she begins to do her own investigation but she begins to uncover things about her sister that she just never expected and it paints a picture of her sister that is perhaps a little bit far removed from who Claire thought she was. Um, can't wait to read it, I think it sounds great, haven't seen too many people talk about it, hoping it's not going to be too gruesome because I have to say although I said oh yeah autumn is a time for thrillers I'm also a little bit of a wuss and obviously in the autumn particularly in England um, it gets darker quicker and I tend to only be able to read books that I find creepy and scary during the day which does limit my reading ability somewhat um, so yeah hopefully, hopefully it's not too creepy, it, hopefully it's just on the right side of um, spine tingling and creepy for me but one that I'm adding to the list nonetheless. Another book that um, I mentioned in my recent summer TBR and summer haul video update which I'll link up here and also in the description box down below is We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. So this is a mystery crime novel. Uh, we are following the story of a small community where 30 years previously a young boy called Vincent was convicted of being involved in the death of his girlfriend's sister and I think the sister was seven at the time. 30 years on he has been released from prison and he is returning to his hometown but his ex-girlfriend Star who was the sister of the young girl who died still lives there. She now lives there with her two children 
and the arrival of Vincent Sparks, a series of events. Um, since I hauled this, I've had a number of people contact me and say, this is fantastic, it's really heavily character driven, which you will love, read it soon, read it soon. Um, very much all about my characters, so looking forward to this one. I have no idea what to expect, I've never read a Chris Whitaker book. Um, but I think that it sounds fascinating and I can't wait to pick it up. Next on my list, I'm adding The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett. Now this is a book that I picked up um, in December last year when I was in Edinburgh and I hauled it and I said at the time that I was going to save it for the autumn because I just felt like it was that type of book and since then I have had a number of people say to me, when are you going to pick up The Colour of Magic? So here you go, it's happening. I said it would happen in the autumn, now it's on my list, here you go. Um, this is the first book in Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, um, a series that I know absolutely nothing about. I have never read anything by Terry Pratchett. Obviously I know the name, um, I have a vague sense that he is pretty huge, um, but that's about it. And even reading the back, doesn't give much of an indication of what this book is actually about. So Terry Pratchett, if you're not familiar, writes fantasy. The top line of this book just says, the funniest and most unorthodox fantasy in this or any other galaxy. Um, so I'll read you the back because I think that it does, <clears throat> no, it doesn't do a great job of explaining what the book is about because I feel more baffled than ever. Uh, but I'm happy, I'll just read you the back and then I'm happy just going in and going on the adventure and the journey and seeing how the story unfolds, seeing whether Terry Pratchett as an author and his writing is a style that is for me. Um, so it says, on a world supported on the back of a giant turtle, sex unknown, a gleeful, explosive, wickedly eccentric expedition sets out. There's an there's an avaricious but incompetent wizard, a naive tourist whose luggage moves on hundreds of dear little legs, dragons who only exist if you believe in them and of course the edge of the planet. As it moves towards a seemingly inevitable collision with a malevolent red star, the disc world has only one possible saviour. Unfortunately, this happens to be the singularly inept and cowardly wizard called Rincewind, Rincewind? Rincewind? who was last seen falling off the edge of the world. There you go. I have no idea what it's going to be like. I have no idea if it's going to be for me. Um, it comes highly recommended. I know it's much beloved. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. Next up we have The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. This is the first book in the Gentleman Bastard sequence. Um, it's the story of Locke Lamora who is a notorious thief in the ancient city of Camor and Locke is an orphan. He has avoided death, he has avoided slavery and he has grown up under the tutelage of a con artist and he is now part of a band of thieves known as the Gentleman Bastards. They steal from the rich and they keep the money for themselves. Um, it says on the back, um, a clandestine war is threatening to tear the ancient city of Camor apart. Caught up in a murderous game, Locke and his friends are suddenly struggling just to stay alive. So I think that this is gonna be one of those delicious um, books with morally gray characters where Locke is perhaps not doing the right thing but is gonna be called upon to stand up and do the right thing. Um, it sounds like it's going to be fast paced and fun and interesting and different. Um, it's been blurbed on the front by George R. R. Martin, need I say more? Um, yeah, I'm just very much looking forward to picking this one up. Next up is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. This is the story of two orphans. It's historical fiction. It's set in the 1860s and we're following the story predominantly of an orphan known as Sue who has grown up in a family of petty thieves but somehow her fate, her future is linked to that of another orphan growing up in a mansion not too far away from where Sue is. Um, don't know much more about it than that. I mentioned this, I think it was in the All My Unread Books video that I did a while ago um, and someone commented and said you will love this book and since then I've kind of been umming and ahhing about picking it up but due to the season, due to the type of books that I like to read during the autumn, this one sounds really great. I've never read anything by Sarah Waters though I know she is a much celebrated a much beloved author in the book community um, so very much want to give this one a go although even as I'm holding it I'm very aware that a lot of the books that I have picked up are actually quite significant in size so we'll see how I go on 
uh, but yeah just another one that I'm adding to the list and this one definitely ticks the box for uh, dark historical fiction which I think will be perfect. And what was I saying about giant books but here is Tombland by CJ Sansom. So this is historical fiction, uh, this is the latest book in CJ Sansom's Shard Lake series, a series that I have read and loved and have a hair stuck to it, read and loved for a long long time. Each book honestly gets bigger and bigger. So Shard Lake is a solicitor. The books begin during the reign of Henry VIII and Shard Lake is kind of pulled in to the insidious court life uh, quite unexpectedly of Henry VIII and he is under service to the king sent off to investigate various crimes and inevitably to keep them hush hush there are all kinds of hijinks and japes that go on uh, when he's there it's never what you expect there are a band of fun and interesting characters whose story arcs we get to follow um, so this particular book is set two years after the death of Henry VIII and England is sliding into some level of chaos and so we're just picking up Matthew Shardlake's story from there. I don't really want to say too much because I think that you should read the books as they were written but honestly if you are interested in historical fiction with a mystery crime element that are rich and descriptive and well written and just a little bit of fun as well uh, they do have some laugh out loud smiling moments then I would highly recommend the Shardlake series and I think there are five or six books now in the series so a great one to binge read. Um, unfortunately though this one sits at over 800 pages so so thanks a lot CJ Sansom, I'm very much looking forward to reading it but it is a huge, huge endeavour um, but yeah I'm adding this to the list. And then you may know um, that I run a book club called Just One More Page um, and so obviously each month I'll have a book from there. I don't know what they are for October and November although for October I'm floating the idea of a thriller because I don't actually have that many thrillers on this list and I would like to add a couple more in but for September the book is The Secret of Strangers by Charity Norman. It's contemporary fiction and it's about a group of strangers whose lives are turned upside down when a gunman traps them in a cafe where they're just going to get their morning coffee um, but it says there is more to the situation than first meets the eye and as the captives grapple with their own inner demons the line between right and wrong begins to blur Will the secrets they keep stop them from escaping with their lives? A tense, multi-dimensional drama from the writer of After the Fall. I read After the Fall a number of years ago and thought that it was okay. I didn't love it, but I thought it was okay. Uh, but I think that the premise of this one sounds fascinating. Uh, very much looking forward to reading it. Um, and yeah, I will let you know in due course what I think. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about today, um, probably no surprise, it has been on and off TBRs. I have been talking on and off about rereading this series for a very long time. And I just thought, Jessica, get it together. Now is the time to do it. Um, and that is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. So, if you are new here let me give you a little bit of a backstory and I'll try and keep it concise. I first read this series by Robin Hobb when I was pregnant with my daughter so that would be circa 12 years ago uh, and I absolutely adored it. Robin Hobb was the reason that I discovered that I was more into character driven stories than plot driven. She was my first real entry into high fantasy books um, and there's just so so much to love. Now this is part of a wider series of books in the realm of the Elder Link that Robin Hobb has written but in particular there are a number of trilogies which feature the same characters, predominantly Fitz um, and another character called The Fool and that particular series which stretches as I said across a number of trilogies has only just recently been concluded and I have not read the final two books in the final trilogy with these characters in uh, mostly because um, I just Think that I'm going to be absolutely gutted to think that their story has finally concluded. Um, but as part of that I kind of thought wouldn't it be good to go back to the beginning and reread them all and have the story fresh in my mind for when I reach the conclusion of um, Fitz and the Fool's story. Um, but I've been putting it off so I kind of flip back and forth between do I want to do it, do I not want to do it, it's a huge undertaking. Um, you can see some of the books here and here, there's one actually missing and then I have some more here. Um, so there are quite a lot of books but 
I just think that it is time. I think that this is the right season to do it in. I maybe will only pick up one every other month. I'm not going to try and commit too much. This particular book is short, but as you can see, they get they get bigger and bigger as you go on. Um, yeah, these are just books that are incredibly special to me um, from a nostalgic point of view and just from characters that I've always, always carried with me. Um, as I said, it was my first kind of real introduction to fantasy and I think for that reason as well, they just hold a very special place in my heart and I just think it's time that I read them and I complete the story. Um, these are adult high fantasy um, they are not, as I said before, they're not heavily plot driven. It's all about the characters and it's about the um, the way they get under your skin and going on this journey with them and um, they have their flaws. One of the things I always love about the way that Robin Hobb writes is that she's not afraid to confront the fact that humans are not perfect. We are flawed, we make mistakes, we don't get it right 100% of the time. We have not very favourable uh, characteristics like envy and um, aggression and she just meets those head on in her characters um, and explores them fully but also equally you know we are hopeful and we have the capacity to love and be generous um, and she covers all of that and it's more as well not just about the main character Fitz uh, but about the side characters as well there are many many to love as you make your way through the series um, so it is time it's going on the list it's happening i'm gonna do it so there you go they are the 10 books that i hope to read at least um over the coming three months um there are a number of other books uh the name of the wind by patrick rothfuss the ten doors the Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow that I pulled out, uh, The Coolest Month by Louise Penny, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, and A Darker Shade of Magic by V. E. Schwab. All of those I pulled out and considered and may pick up, but I'm a little bit hesitant because a number of those are first books of series um, and they make a TBR all on their own to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and stick to these ten. Obviously I tend to read about five or six books a month so I do have a little bit of wiggle room to pick up something that I feel like reading along the way um, but for now thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you aren't already leave me a comment let me know if you have read any of the books that I've talked about today or if you have any other recommendations particularly for not too creepy thrillers um, I would love to know uh, but yeah as always thank you very much for watching take care and I'll see you soon